all right hi everyone amazing here welcome to my youtube channel so if you're here for the first time you know what it is hit the subscribe button because we're going to be doing a lot about power bi excel and sql right here on this channel okay right now we're going to be doing real estate property management right on this dashboard today now as you can see what we have right here is the real estate data and i'm going to actually show you how to create a very nice looking dashboard just like this using under xnr2 to, to create your you know your background or your template whatever you want to call it uh, as you can see this dashboard is highly interactive and you know what it is the power bi always gives to you when you create your dashboard with power bi okay right now we have our filters right here hidden when we click on that little icon right here you're going to see that we have the icons right here and you can use the filter the filter through everything we have right here so you might not get what is going on right now very well with what we're just showing but as soon as we start creating from the scratch you won't definitely understand what it is and how you can implement the same thing we have done right here on your own personal project okay we have this navigation that can take us to different pages of this particular dashboard and it's very very you know unique and all of that so i'm going to show you how to create everything down to the last part of this dashboard so if you're ready you know always i'm always ready and all of that so now let's go ahead and actually insert in new pbis okay right now go ahead and click on file and from file what you're gonna do is just to click right here on new i'm gonna insert a new pbi for you which i had already done so what i'm gonna do right now i'm gonna bring that up right here this is what it is right now so we need to go get data right so i'm gonna click on this particular go get data right here for me to go and fetch where i have my data right in uh, okay right now it has navigated us to this particular part and we want to go to where we have our data right in okay right now i have this particular youtube uh, power bi dashboard i'm going to click on it and here you see i have house data or dashboard so if i'm going to click on that you can see housing data set so i'm going to double click on it and i'm going to have it right on board right now so give it some time to have itself loaded right in here Okay, here we go. We have all the tables that I, we have in the day in the, in the uh, workbook. So I'm going to actually click on this. And so what we're going to see right now is the data right here. Now, if we go, those are not really active. What we can do is just to come right here and make sure we have this actually checked. And once we've done that, we can come down and load straight up. So we can't load because we have that work that we need to do to have data transform. We're going to actually go ahead and click on transform data right here. And let's see what's going to happen. All right, nicely we have it right here. So we have a lot of columns that we are not going to use. And quickly, we need to truncate that particular columns because it's gonna make our file to be very, very heavy. Or uh, please, if you have your file downloaded and you want to follow along, just follow every single step I have, you know, followed right here. So for the first time, I'm gonna have this one click on. So I don't need this column. And I don't need this particular column right here as well. So I'm gonna hold my shift to have this columns highlighted and what i'm gonna do right now is to actually press the delete key on my keyboard i'm gonna have it away and one beautiful thing i like about power bi is that it's gonna actually have to insert a new uh, stuff for you and you can actually rename this so that whoever is going to inherit this particular uh, report or dashboard whatever you want to call it would understand what's going to write here in case he or she needs to change something uh this particular one right here down to this particular grid i don't need them i'm gonna actually do the same thing i'm gonna delete and i'm gonna have that so everything is being recorded on a single stop right here because what we are doing is similar so we're going to record it right on this particular aspect here right okay after we might have done removing that what we need to actually go ahead and do again is just like we want to get this particular view away we don't need the view right we want to take the view off so we just have to make sure we get our data clean just like this so i have to go ahead and move this up just take this and actually go ahead and take it off as well and now we are almost done with our cleaning for now with this particular access so the next i'm going to take off is the id so i don't need the ids right here we are good to go so the many column is what we are going to use but this is not ideal why is because those are numbers so if we go ahead and actually pull it inside a column to actually make sure it gives us what we want it's going to give us the wrong information so which means we don't really need this right so we need to transform it into what we really want so follow my steps and see how we can actually get that created 
Okay, the first transformation we are going to do right now is on this particular bedroom right here. So on these bedrooms, we want to actually make sure we add bedrooms to those numbers we have right here to make it readable. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go to my add column. Then from add column, I'm going to say column from example right here. Once I have that click, it's going to actually insert a new column for me. So right now, because I want to have bedrooms, I'm going to come right here. I'm going to type in my bedroom right here. I'm going to hit my enter key. And what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to actually make sure I just tap this. And what I'm going to have right in here is a space for me to have something typed in. So I'm going to type in my tray. I'm going to give it space. I'm going to just type in my bedroom. So now bedroom. Okay, because maybe we might have one bedroom. So it's, it can be bedrooms, it can be one bedroom. So what I'm going to do right now, I might decide to actually go ahead and use this and have my S right in here. I think it's going to make a lot of sense. I'm going to hit my enter key and this time around I have it all. So I'm going to click on right here and all that dying boom is okay. Now what am I going to do because I don't want to have have a file so quickly I want to have this particular one deleted from here. Don't worry if you have any data it's still going to work very fine. So it's still here but it's just like we have some kind of hidden it. So the next thing I'm going to do right now I am going to do the same thing to this particular floor go to this particular aspect again and the same thing i had done previously is what i'm going to do right now so i'm going to just type in here flaws so i've just done this just like the previous one so quickly what we need to do is just to get the floor out of here once we have just done that we need to get the floor out of here so we just have to go ahead and delete it so right now this one's going to be a little bit different so we just have to do something different so we just have to add what i call conditional column so clicking on the conditional column right here what we're going to do right now is just the condition what we have right here okay you should know that we have zero and one i'm going to show you that i should have shown you that before now so i'm going to say right here it's going to be waterfall so let us bring this down i'm going to have to make sure i zoom closely so i'm going to actually type in here my waterfall waterfront survey water friends so status so right here i'm going to actually select the column where we have that writing so here is it and all of that so if it's equal to one so i'm going to type in here it's going to be yes so this is what i want to use and if it is not just give me no so i'm going to show you everything how it works and you know on your screen you can see what waterfall is all about the kind of building that is actually on waterfront or waterfront whatever okay right now i'm going to come right here i'm going to click on okay and let's see we have a new column right so quickly if we come to this particular aspect where we have it okay now let's actually scroll down to where we have that waterfront right in so now if i have this particular place highlighted you can see we have one and zero and we have just done that that is nice so i'm gonna have it deleted as well so we to keep this very very you know working well okay now the next one is gonna be we have conditions that is the condition of the buildings we have right the condition of the buildings we have and if we go to the finished um dashboard Okay, coming right here right now, you can see what we've just done is that we have four bedrooms and we have how many numbers based on the filter we just got placed on it. And we have the floors right here, right? This is exactly this kind of story you want to tell, right? Now, the condition is actually uh, something that has to do with uh, with this. So, with the front and let me see what the condition is going to be like. Okay, here is our conditions right here. As you can see, we have very good, good and bad. So now we want to see how many of our buildings or of our houses are actually on the good condition, on a bad condition, so that we can give it the right attention that it needs. That's exactly what we want to do. So we have the data set that supports that, but how do we really go ahead and do that? Okay, now with what we have right here right now, we have from zero to two. So now if it is zero, that means the property is, is on a bad condition. If we have it one on a very good condition and two is on good condition, which means we can actually choose to actually still look at the, uh, the good condition that maybe it might not be some kind of very good, right? So because we have very good, then if it needs attention, we can go ahead and do that. So now we can track this particular condition based on the locations where we have those buildings and whatever. So how do we do this? It's very simple and easy. We had just done that previously before now. So conditional column is going to help us to get it done and all of that. So quickly, what we can do right now is just to come right here. 
I'm going to type in my words condition status so after I might have done with that I'm going to come right here I'm going to select this condition and I'm going to say if this is equal to one if it's equal to one it's going to be very good condition very good so very good uh, I want to come down right here and uh, add a duck, add a duck close. I'm going to select the same column again, the condition column. And I'm going to say right now, if this particular one is equal to two this time around, what I want to have is just going to be good. And uh, the zero is going to be some kind of a bad, so that is bad condition. We have just done the justification right now. So quickly, I'm going to click on my OK key. And once I've done that, I can see every single thing I had done right there is right here. And quickly what we're going to do right now is just to make sure we go ahead and actually move the column that actually you know help us to create this away because right now we have something that we can rely on so we're going to have it moved up and all of that so now that is very interesting so what is we need to do to have this particular transformation very very transform okay the next thing we're going to do right now is just how many um I'm talking about the interval of innovation. So we want to know the interval of innovation, like between 20, uh, 2000 and 2016. So how many years do we have between these particular years? And what that is going to help us to do is to help us to create how many of our properties are being renovated and how many are, uh, have never been renovated and stuff like that. So let's see how we can actually do that. So it's very simple and easy. We need to actually add a new column. And this column is going to be some uh, from column a custom column right here so creating custom column is what we're going to do right now i'm going to type in here my interval interval so interval and what i'm going to do right now is that what column do we really need to actually specify so the column is going to be the year renovated we're going to subtract that from the year the property was being built and that is exactly what we need to do once we are done with this i'm going to actually click on ok right now and let's see insert oh we insert third double i think we just have to move this up have this closed and we're gonna go right down and click on ok now we're gonna have what we really want so now we have this but we don't want to have this minus you know 2018 2019 2001 whatsoever right here so we want to actually get this up so how do we do this it's very simple and easy to be done so for we to do that right now what we can do is to insert another uh column right uh, okay okay uh, i think we can just take a shortcut without having to do a lot of you know work what we can do right now is just for we to like this column right now we want to leave it like this and we're going to go right at the top level right here and uh, add under conditional column and what it's going to do right now is going to actually give us like renovation innovation status and once we've done that i'm going to come down right here I'm going to look for where we have that particular interval right in. I'm going to say if this interval is greater than zero here, uh, I'm going to type renovated. So renovated. And anything less than zero right now is going to be not renovated. So not renovated. So I'm going to actually go right here. I'm going to click on this OK. And let's see what we have right now. As, as you can see, this one is greater than zero, and this one is actually like zero, so it's not renovated. So now you can see what we have right here. And right now, this particular interval we've just created, we can decide to actually take it up as well and all that. And then make sure your data type is always right, or else you're gonna have problem once you start creating your visualization and stuff like that. So this is a full text. I wanna turn it to text, and here right now is actually number. So it's a number, so we can, we can put it on a whole number. Though we're not going to use this, but nevertheless, you can still go ahead and actually make sure you change it and actually make sure you have the right data types right for every part of it. So please go ahead and actually do the same thing I'm doing right now for we to have something extraordinary right here. Okay, guys, I'm going to tell you first and that we are done from here right now. So what is next for we to do right now is very, very simple and easy. So the next thing we're going to do right now is just that we don't want to have every single thing on one single table. doesn't really make sense. doesn't make sense. Let me take to the previous one we had worked on. I'm going to take you right here. As you can see, we have different tables, right? And uh, if you had been watching my tutorials, you must have seen most of those tables, how I got them created and stuff like that. So we're going to have to create this particular table, right? 
and we call it dimensional table and we have it booked in a place and we have our fact table right here that hosts you know huge amount of raw data and all that so what this helps us to do is just to help us to navigate through where we want to go to without having to think of like oh where can i get this no we don't want to do something like that so how do we do that right now okay first of all i want to name this one my fact table fact table you know what it is so fact table is right here so the first thing we're going to do right now is just to come right this particular aspect on this fact table so right click you're going to see a lot of things right here but you're going to be like what am i going to do with all this don't worry we just want to use duplicate i'm going to have it duplicated which means we have it duplicated right now that we have duplicated doesn't mean it doesn't have uh, some kind of relationship so it has a link to this so right now this one i'm going to name it something like okay let's see what we're gonna do i want to name this one property dim that is dim underscore property underscore location i'm gonna just type location right here so location that's location so i'm gonna click on my okay so please i'm not gonna do everything from the scratch for you guys so follow like the tool i'm gonna actually have created so follow how i got it done then you can do the rest of it and you'll be okay to go so I don't want you to mix uh, to miss any part of this. So right click on this. Now what you're going to do right now, this is the only column I want to have to use, right? So I want to use this column alone. So other columns, I'm not going to need them. So right click on this column and say remove other columns. And there we go. We have other columns being removed. Dizo. And this top is being added right here for us, which is beautiful. We can actually time travel. Like when we click right here right now, this is where we left. This is the column. And this is what we have right here when we got it removed and beautiful right after we might have done that right now the next thing we're going to do is just right click right here right now and what we're going to do right now is just to say remove duplicates so because we want to actually go ahead and create one to many relationship when we get the power bi so it is very very important for we to do this so after we might have done with this make sure we have it on the right what on the right data type I'm going to come right here to add column. I'm going to say this, right? So if you click on this particular drop down right here, you're going to see different two ways you can actually add what you can actually add your index column wherever. So when I create an ID, which we don't have before, you want to create ID to link this table to this table. And you can decide to use from zero, from one, or you can customize yours. But what need do we have to customize? Nothing. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to have it just like this. And I have it. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to actually type, um, location id so we have it location id i'm gonna move it down to this particular aspect and we are done with this right all right everyone as you can see we have orders created so what we can do right now is just to make sure we have this on this single group so we're gonna have it we don't want to see it like this so what we can do right now i can right click on any one of this right here i'm gonna go right to this particular part right here and create a new group and once I have this new group created, what I'm going to type in right here right now is going to be my what? My uh, dimension. Dimensions. So this is what it is. So we just want to type in this dimension. Okay, I'm going to click on OK. And we just want to do this. So now we have a dimension right here. So what I'm going to do right now, already I have this in the group. I'm going to actually make sure I click on this, hold on my control and actually have this highlighted alongside have this highlighted, have this highlighted. So I got everything highlighted right now. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to right click on this. I want to say move to group and this is the group I want you to move to and all that. So I can actually close this, collapse this and you can see it makes it some, some kind of, some kind of neat. All right now, we don't really have too much going on right here. So you might not feel the impact of the reason why we did this. Let's say you have like 50 tables so you might want to group your tables nicely so that when you come back to park query to do anything you would know which folder to click to have what you really want to have changed changed and all of that so right now i'm going to click on this particular aspect right here so there we have it right so what are we going to do right now i just want to come to home so right now it is time for we to link our tables all the dimensional tables we have created has no link here to this particular table if we go to power bi right now it's not going to work well so we have to link them with the ids and how do we do that let's do it okay first of all you just have to come to this particular match queries right here so click on that particular match queries and let's see what it is so we have all the columns right here the first one we want to consign ourselves much about is the property location so click on that 
have it highlighted, come right here and make a selection. And we just want to select uh, from this particular part right here where we have our location right in. And this is the location. And we can see the column we have selected right here. It's the same column we have right here. Select it. And once we've done this right now, go all the way down. So you can see if it matches 100%, uh, that is good to go. So always use the left outer uh, joints, which is all from first matching from second. That is everything right here would, would match what we have right here, which is one to many relationship. Okay, going down to this side, click on OK. And let's see what we're going to have right now. Okay, we have it on a table form, right? So if you have not done this before, it might look kind of a little bit new, but something very simple. All right, so I'm going to click right here. And after I might have clicked right here, what are you going to do? Come right to this particular aspect and select it. We don't need that. And come and deselect this as well. And the only thing we want to have right here right now is just the location ID. That is all we want to have. I'm going to click on OK. And there we go. Voila, we have them, right? Okay, we have merged all our queries. That is OK. So what I'm going to do right now, highlight the one from the left, or oh, sorry, from the right hand here, and come to the last one, come to the last ID and hold your shift key to have it highlighted and once, once I'm, i've done that i'm gonna have to move it down to this particular last aspect right here. as you can see you want to move it to the left side that is exactly what i want to do right now i want to have all my ids right here i'm gonna to have to release this and there we have our id floated to the left hand side okay now you remember what it is that we have to do right okay right now because we already have id that represents our property location right here I'm going to have this deleted. It's not going to affect anything. Everything is okay because already we have that in the dimensional table right here. And quickly, we just want to go through every single one of them and have them truncated. That is exactly what it is that we have to do. So I'm going to click on this one as well. I'm going to have it removed. Uh, you want to click on this one. I'm going to have it removed because already we have IDs for them. Have this removed as well. And uh, we're going to come to this particular, you know, interval. That is renovation status right here. I want to have it removed as well. Okay, right now we have something very unique right here. Every single part of this, uh, some kind of here. Now this is where we have our location right now. And this year we have our bedrooms. This year we have our floors and the waterfront is right here. And the condition status plus the renovation is right here. Guys, I'm going to tell you, if you are actually still with me, you are awesome, right? Okay, right now we are done with our cleaning and transformation. The next thing we're going to be doing right now is to make sure we get this to our Power BI environment. So are you ready for that right now? Because I am always ready. Okay, right now I'm going to click on this particular close and load. Do the same thing as I do. I'm going to click on that. And right now it's going to take a little while to have it served right at the right spot. So what are we going to do? We just have to give it a while to have it served right here. It depends on your computer speed, like the speed of your computer, and it's gonna actually get done immediately. So let us give it some moments. Okay, guys, right now, as you can see, we have all our tables right here, just the way it is. So right now, we have the fact table, and we have all the dimensional table. Okay, what we need to do next right now is just to actually, you know, get to this side and go to the relationship view and click on it. So what we're going to have is what we have. Okay, right now we have automatic what? We have automatic, uh, you know, relationship for us here. So we don't need to do anything again. So this is what it is. Can you see that right now? So you can rearrange this if you want to. I can actually move this to the top level right here. I can move this away a little bit. And I can actually make sure I get it done just like this to make sure I have the view of all my tables. I'm just going to scroll all the way down to this part. So this has no effect on what we are about to do. So it's optional. If you want to do this, it's optional. It's just for you to arrange to see all the tables you will have. And you can see how the table flows. So this style we have right here shows many. And this one we have right here shows just one ID is existing right here, but multiple of that ID is actually existing right in the park table. That's exactly what it is. So right now we go to our data view, and this is where we see all the data that has to do with what we have right here. Now, do you see what we have right now? It has not much difference with what we have on our park area and all of that. So right now, those are the tables we have right here. 
Okay, guys, it is time for me to take you to where we can start to create our visual, you know, element, whatever you want to call it, template. Hmm, I think so. Okay, right now, we don't really have a lot to do uh, with Power BI when it comes to graphical work whatsoever. So I actually have what I call PowerPoint right here to help us to create that for us. So let me show you the previous work we had done, how we got everything right here created. Now I'm going to take you to this side right here. This is exactly what it is. And this is the second one. And here is the third one right here. So we cannot really do well in Power BI, but our sorry, PowerPoint is going to help us to actually get it created and create our real estate property management dashboard in Power BI nicely the way it should be. Okay, guys, I think I need to show you how I got everything created from the scratch. Then you can actually pull along and get some ideas on how you can create the next project template from PowerPoint. What I'm going to do right now is just to come to the top level right here. And uh, quickly, I'm going to go to file and from file, I want to actually insert a black template. So right now, we just, ha we just have this right here. Highlight it and actually get them all. And that is all we need to do. So it is time for me to get more deep inside this. Okay, right now, right click on this and come to this particular uh, format background. Uh, I'm going to come right to this particular aspect right here, go to more colors and I'm going to come to custom. So once I get to custom, just leave it on this particular 255, that's exactly what it is that we have to get. Okay, um, I'm going to come to the top level right here. You know what it is, go to insert and uh, come to shapes. And from shapes, we want to pick up this particular rectangle. I'm going to drag it down, I'm going to have it here. I'm going to go to the top level and I'm going to come to this particular format. And here we're going to actually have to change the height and the weight. Here it's going to be 13 or uh, 0.33. Exactly, something like this would be cool for me. I'm going to have to get it this way. I think, okay, I can still go ahead and move. Exactly, something like this would be cool. So now we need to change the color of this as well. Okay, right click again and actually go towards, go to format shape. And once we get here, what we can do right now is just to quickly go right to this particular line aspect right here. We don't want to have any, we don't want to have any line on it. And come right here and change it to this particular color. As you can see, we have this kind of, you know, I don't want to, I don't know, maybe it's black or gray, whatever. So we have that, right? So once we've done that, just let it be like that. And let's see how we can actually get more right on it. So everything we do right here is bringing different types of shapes and actually having them on top of each other. So go to actually shapes again, and we just want to go ahead and locate a particular shape where we can have it. I think it's going to be this particular shape right here called flowchart. So go ahead and get it. So we just want to go ahead and drag this down. So once we have dragged down, we just want to change the dimension. I just love to use this so that you can actually get what it is that we're doing right here. I want to go by 7.31, so by 7, it's going to be 7.31, this is what it is. So once we have just done this, let's see what we're going to do right now to have it right where it should be. Uh, we just have to make sure we have it in the middle of it. And what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to click on this and I'm going to go to the top level, go to format and I want to align this in the middle and uh, I want to align this in the center as well. So center and middle. So once we've done this right now, the next thing we're gonna do is just for you to right click on it. And once you've done the, once you've right clicked, make sure you select it. Click on this one to have this one selected alone. So right click on this and go to what we call edit points. Click on that. Once, once we've done that, we can now see that we have this particular point where we can actually move our, our, you know, our, is it our, our, our <laughs> sorry for that, our, our shape. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and move this shape down to this particular part right here. And I have done that. I'm going to actually go ahead and make sure it's in the same line with this. So we cannot have something perfect. And you just have to make sure you use the time to get the perfect shape you really want. So now it's just a demonstration. So get a lot of time to be used. All of that. So once you are done with this, the next thing we're going to be doing right now is to change the color we have right here. There's something very, very important uh, that is going to actually blend with our dashboard, right? So go ahead and change this. I'm going to go ahead and use something like this with coffee. Me. I think I want to use something like this, but I'm not too cool with this. I can actually go ahead and actually get to, sorry for that. Let's just go back, go to this particular more colors and I'm going to go ahead and, you know, select any other color I feel like I'm going to be cool with right here. Maybe this is going to be cool for me. I'm going to go ahead and check it and all of that. So here we go. We have the color. 
So here is it. So we have the color right now. So this is exactly what it is. So once we are done with this, now it is time for we to create the other part of it. So this is one of the aspects we really want to create. So I want to go to the top level and go to insert and bring up this right here. I just you know go back to the top level quickly. You know what it is. So we want to do this by just want to go by one one point seventeen. So here we go, we have it. So I just want to make sure I have this right here for now. And I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to have this one right here. And quickly, I want to change it as well. Uh, all I just need to change right now is just the height. So yeah, we're going to just go ahead and change this to 56. So 56, that is exactly what it is. So once we've done this right now, I want to make sure it sits right here. I'm going to have to duplicate it. Have duplicated it as well. So now I just want to bring this down. Bring this down. And I want to take this, move it up. I can actually go ahead and make sure I have it some kind of highlighted at the same time. So we can do the highlights like this. Go to the top level and what we can do right now, go to a format and go to align and just say horizontally and we're just going to go right and use the vertical aspect of it. And now we have equal space for all of them. Right, this is beautiful. So let us change the color to this. So right click on it and go down and say format. And come right here and pick the color. So we just want to go ahead and customize the color. So I'm going to put my zero here. And here is going to be um, nine, six. And right here, we're going to have 130. And I'm going to come, click on OK. Let's see what it is that we have. This is the color we're going to have right here, right? This is beautiful. So we are almost right here, right? OK, I'm going to highlight these three together. So once I have highlighted them together right now, what I'm going to do is just to change the color at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and use this particular color we have right here. As you can see, we have it. I'm going to take off the line color from it. So now we have it like this. So first of all, I want to have this duplicated. I'm going to have to move this right here. And after I have done that, I want to actually make sure I highlight those three together and go to this particular aspect here, go to shadow and click on this. And what we're going to do right now is to use something like this. And this is what it is. Can you see that right now? This is what we have done. Okay, quickly, I just want to make sure I get a curve of this particular place and it is time for me to create the rest of the cards we want to use. Okay, let us quickly change the height and the weight of this one right here. Uh, it's going to be 1.63, 1 1.6 and 3. So here we have it. So once we've just gotten this done, so what we can do is just to have this right here. So we don't have it right here and have it duplicated. I'm going to move this one here as well. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to have this right here. So once I have this right here, guess what I'm going to do? Is just for to change the height and the weight again. So follow every single thing because I don't want to be dragging and you don't know how I have done it. And once we get the Power BI, our work is going to be different. So I want you to have a perfect work just like I do. So let's see what we can do next. So let's just go to the top level right here and come right here right now. So we just want to go ahead and actually do it by 4.37, 4 4.37, then there we have it so quickly. So we want to come, bring this here. So now we just want to make sure we have it very close to each other, just like this. So now here we go. Now we have this, I just want to make sure I duplicate this. I'm going to have this right for this particular aspect right here and change the dimension as well to what we really want to have to use. So let's just go ahead and change the height and the weight. Go to format and come right here. So quickly, we just want to do it by 2 point what's 2.35. Hit enter and come down right here. And this is what it is. This is where we have it. And uh, we just have to duplicate this as well. So we have to duplicate it. So once we've done that, we just want to bring this one right. This little aspect here and duplicate it again and bring this right here. And we can actually fill this up. So once we get here, we don't have to take the measurement again. We just know that we have to fill this down to the same level. So here we go. We just want to make sure this one goes up again. So we just have to do the same thing. And we have to fill, we have to be in the same way. So as you can see, we are almost right here, as you can see. So what we can do right now, move this right here and come duplicate this and bring it right to this particular aspect and let's see how we can actually get things done right here. It's very simple. Okay, right on this, go to the top level and come right here and change it. 
by 5.14, 5.14. So here we go, we have the height and the weight changed. So what we can do right now is just to make sure we have it sitting rightly. And this is what it is, duplicate it and make sure you bring this down. So once we are done with this, we can have to change this again. So go to the top level again and come right here. You just want to do this by 1.64, 1.64. So here we go. And uh, we are done. So what we can do right now is just to make sure we have it sit right here. We can move it to the top a little bit. Something like this would be cool for me. Something like this. So not duplicate it and have it right here. Have this one duplicated as well. And make sure this one is right here. So right now, hold the tree together and go to the top level, come down to align and distribute horizontally. And just want to come right here and move to the top to align tab. And this is what we have right now. Beautiful. So what we can do next is just for you to get this and bring it down to this particular aspect here. So now we just have to make sure it's sitting right. I'm going to move it to the top level as well. I want to come hold this, have it duplicated and move them down. Sit right here. And this is exactly what it is that we have done. Can you see this right now? This is wonderful. This is what we have used in our dashboard and make our dashboard to look just like this. It's not really easy to have it created in Power BI, but it would be very, very nice if we can go down to PowerPoint just like as we do right now. So after what I've done with this, there is one thing I've never created. So I'm just, just going to go right to this little aspect right here. Go to insert and from insert, go to shape. And we're going to locate that particular kind of, um, I think, I think. We're going to go ahead and take it. Let me see. Let me go to the top again. Go to right here and let's see what we can do with this. I don't know what shape I used. Uh, I think something like, get it away. Go back. And let me see what we can go ahead and do. I'm going to take it out. Let's see this. I'm going to have to get it down right here and open it up. I think this is the shape I've used. Uh, I want to go to the top left right here. Go to rotate. Uh, not this. Have it closed. Go to rotate. And let's see how we can actually get this rotated. So now we just have to flip it. Mm, yep, exactly. So once we have it flipped like this, I want to bring it all the way down to this particular aspect here. So, click on this particular color and have it duplicated for it. So just go ahead and copy it and have the same color for that. And what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to send this to back, send it to back, and it's going to go in between here. So what we can do right now is just to make sure we move it a little bit, then it's pointing at it all of that. So once we are done with this, we can go ahead and duplicate it, but we're not really done from here right now. We have some icons to be right on it. So let's go ahead and see what it is I'm talking about. Can you see those icons right here right now? We have this icon here, you know, in PowerPoint. So we just want to bring the icons we have used. I want to show you how to get the icons. You can actually, actually go ahead and copy this and have it in the one we are creating right now. But I want to show you how to get the icons. But before the icon, we just want to have this particular property management typed in into the one we are doing. And I think it's very easy for you to do. It's all uh, is something very easy. Let us just copy this one from here, and you can go ahead and do the same thing. Copy it. Let's go to our working. So have it pasted right here. We have the same thing. So all you just need to do is just actually have to type it out, just like bringing it from here. Go to insert, and uh, if you know how to use Excel, you will be able to do this. So I created a lot of you know. So just type in your property so property management so as you can see once you've typed your property management right here you format it to the color you really want and you bring it to the top level right here and that is all you need to do so after that we have it we have a, a, a little circle right here go to the top level and go to insert and come to shapes and from shapes bring this on and hold your shift key to have it very rounded and this is what it is. We can go ahead with this and click on this particular color to have the same color used over and over again. And uh, go ahead and do this and go ahead and have the color for it. And once we have done that, we can actually have this right here. And this is beautiful. This is what we have done. It has no much difference with what we have done previously before now. 
Okay, now it is time for me to get our icons. So I'm gonna come to this insert, and from insert, you can see where we have our icons in right here. So make sure you have your internet connected, else it's not gonna work. And quickly, I have a very speedy internet right here. So now we have the icons. So you can search like building. So now I can go ahead and click on this, you can click on this, you can have this click done. And if I want to add more, you can just look at where we have it. So just go ahead and insert this and see what it is. Now that is how I got all these icons right here. So once you have done, uh, you know, bringing your icons right here, you can go ahead and actually fix it where you want to have them right in and change the colors, right? So now I have this right here and I want to give it um, a good color that's going to pop out. I just want to go to my format graphics and I want to come right here. I want to select this and it's going to pop out. That is that what it is. And I can actually take this one right here. I can bring this up right here. So right now I've shown you how to have this done. And it's very simple and easy. Although I'm going to have those, uh, you know, in case you don't have latest PowerPoint like PowerPoint 365 or 2019, you might not have the privilege to have these features used, but I'm going to help you get it. Just go to the one you have downloaded. You will see it right there. So what I want to do right now, I just want to have all this. So I want to have all this. I want to copy all this. I want to copy them and have it used on our own. So I'm going to show you how I got all a part of it. So once I've done that, I'm going to come to this particular one right here. I want to quickly have to drop them right here. And this is what it is. So right now, what this one depicts is actually, if I go to my finished dashboard right here, we can now see that what we have right here is this very good hazard, very greenish you know, mark and all of that. So we have some kind of pink and green, right for the good and for the bad, we have some black pearl. Good means this particular building needs attention. Yeah, needs attention, right? Okay, what we can do right now is to quickly go back to where it is. So here it is. So we go back here. I'm going to show you how I did that. We just want to come right here, uh, go to this same place and come right to the black that where the heck is it? And here we go. And we look at where we can have something that has to do with cancel and something that has to do with mark. We look at all that. And once we are done with that, I think our mark is not gotten from here, but this particular one right here, we can get it from here, like this multiplication sign here. Once you drop it down, you're going to have to change the color and you have something like this and all of that. And when we talk about the mark, I think we can go ahead and actually make a search for the mark as well. So go to icons. And from icons, once our icon opened up, we can quickly search through and see what it is that we want. Okay, what we need to do right now, I'm gonna say good. Let's see. Now, once you type good, you can see we have the mark right here. So we can see we just have to bring it all the way right here. And what once we have it right here, we can go ahead and change the color to what we really want. So we can just change the fill color to something like green, something like this, you know. I uh, would change the wrong color. So I think we can go ahead and change the fill color to something like this green color. And this is what it is. You can resize it and you have some perfect work right here. Okay, now quickly, the other part of it is actually we some kind of like go back here and bring all those icons, bring those icons, bring this icon as well and bring the labels here. Here, very simple and easy to be created. You can create it on your own. You don't have to like, oh, I don't know how to do this. It's very simple. So just go ahead and actually have it, get it away from uh, that place right there. And once you have it there, so here I'm going to take this one, I'm going to copy and bring this to the top left right here. I'm going to type in here my overview. Over, overview. So once I've done that, I want to go ahead and make sure this is actually on a very dark color because that is exactly the one that is highlighted. So it's going to be on dark color, right? And it's going to be bold at the same time. Overview. This is overview. So it's going to be this overview. Okay, fine, nicely. So, so we just have to get it away. So wherever. Okay, let me give you a rundown through the many part of it that we are not going to be creating from the scratch. So now I've given you some kind of head up on how to do this in PowerPoint. So now once we are done with this, what you can do right now, if we go to the next one, what we did, we push this particular, you know, one from here, we just push it down 
to get a little bit of a part with duplicate it, which I'm not going to do. So I'm going to actually come right here and see this. So if you want to see this in action, I can actually go ahead and show you. I know some people will be like, oh, how did you do it? You should have shown us how you did it. So what we're going to do right now is just to come right here and have a duplicated, duplicate slide. And once we've done that right now, we can push this one right here. So once we've done this pushing right here, and now we can actually go ahead and use the same font, same color, whatever. Just copy this and have it right here. We're going to have this right here. And once we've done that, copy this again. I'm going to copy this format and have it for this. And what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to copy this format again. I'm going to have this format for this, which means the active one is actually this right now. So for this next one, I'm going to actually do the same thing. Duplicate the layer and actually come right here. So I want to take this down. Then we just have to go ahead and do the same thing. So quickly, we just want to copy this and have it, have it for this one right here. This is the active one. And here we go. We just have to go ahead and copy the same thing. I'm going to have it for this one as well. I want to turn this one to the inactive one. That is exactly what we need to do and all of that. So now that was how we did every single thing we have done right here that really, you know, make everything stand out and all of that. And we were able to actually create something very awesome on this particular dashboard. Can you see this right now? This is how we did everything. So guys, if you just watched this end, we are very, very much on the right path to create a very dynamic and a very good looking dashboard. So keep watching and we are going to be coming with the analysis and how we can actually organize our, our charts and all of that and write some little dots to actually get every single thing done right here for you guys. So I want to say thank you for watching. If you have stayed to this end, it's a big blessing for me. So if you've not hit the subscribe button, you might consider how to do that. So and if you've not really liked, actually comment on my channel, go ahead and comment on this particular video and let me know what you feel about this video and all of that and let me know what your suggestion is we always love to make it better and you can actually always help us to make it better by telling us what we need to do to garnish our content every single time all right everyone thank you very much for your support and all of that so if you like come your way in the second part of this video see you